Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good morning to everyone. Okay, so today if we continue our topic, which is your process synchronizations. Okay, in this topic, you will learn about the how the component process will affect or be affected by other process executing in the system. So, computing process can be either directly shared a logical address space, either the code or the data, or it can be allowed to share data only through the files or messages. So, in the previous chapters, you will learn how to know how to achieve uh, the use of threads. Okay, you will learn about the threads and the market trainings, how it will be uh, concept, the concept, and also how they is being uh, the or being operate. So. Since they have a track, then the multi tracks which is running concurrently, so the concurrent access will has a possibility on the concurrent access to share data, which can result in data inconsistency. Inconsistency. Okay, so therefore in this chapter, you will discuss about the various mechanism in order to ensure the orderly executions of the cooperating process that share the logical address space so that the data can consistency consistency is maintained okay so if kita akan minta kita tengok eh kalau dalam proses kita akan ada proses yang that concurrent process or we call a cooperating process okay some threads and we have a multi threads okay that running concurrently so how they share the data how they share the codes okay uh, at the same times they can run uh, at the same time, the data that can be accessed both process and that access concurrently can be uh, can be maintained the consistency rate. So the object, the the outline of this topic, okay. Uh, some of the solutions are in the hardware solution, and some of them are in the um, software solutions. So we have to look the concepts are there. Yang topic subject ni dia lebih kepada Concept. It's very important when you have a multi-processor. Uh, so, kita akan tengok eh. Kalau kita single processor, uh, they are able to do the threads and the multi threadings So, macam mana dia maintain dia punya data consistency dia. And then, dalam, dalam masa yang sama, uh, kita akan tengok ada juga uh, some of this concept is being used, okay, in the multi-processing. So, this is the objectives. Okay, when you will be able to describe the se critical section problems and illustrate the risk conditions. Okay, and you can see that the different solutions for the hardware solutions or the software solutions in order to maintain the synchronizations of the data or the process synchronization. So, they demonstrate how the mutex logs, semaphores, monitors, and the condition variables can be used in order to solve the critical session problems okay and evaluate the tools that solve the critical session problem either in the low moderate and high contention scenarios okay okay so previously we already discussed about the process can be con can execute concurrently or in parallel okay so kita dah tahu dah process Processes able, eh, dalam operating system, the process is able to be can, can execute concurrently and it can be worked in the parallel. So, this means one process may only partially complete execution, and partially complete even before another process is being scheduled. In fact, kalau ada process, it can be interrupted at before another process is being scheduled. Okay, in fact, okay, a process may be interrupted at at any point in its instruction stream and the processing call may be assigned to execute instruction of another process. Okay, additionally, okay, uh, we already introduced to you to execute instruction of another process. Introduce a parallel execution in which two instruction streams, okay, Execute simultaneously on the separate processing call. So, dalam chapter ni, kita akan explain macam mana concurrent ataupun parallel execution can contribute in issues 
that involve in the integrity of data shared by the several process. So, ni guys, ini kita akan nampak eh, ada beberapa isu yang perlu diberi perhatian okay, of the programmer, especially the designers for the operating system when you run a process that running in the concurrent day. So, there are several, some several issues that need to be uh, considered. Okay. Alright. So, in this issues, okay, kita akan discuss about the punya, okay, kita akan discuss the punya issue dia ialah. Okay. Kita akan tengok, we have a different process, okay, for example, we have a process 0. Okay, and process 1, uh, creating the child process using the POP function ataupun kita panggil the POP system call. So, namanya P0 dengan P1 ni, dia ada dia punya child process. Maksudnya, dia ada sub-process that running. So, apa yang berlaku ialah Okay. Okay, apa yang berlaku ialah the risk conditions akan berlaku okay, on the kernel variables okay, di mana dia akan represent the next ever available process identifier. Okay, kita tahu setiap proses ada proses identifier dia sendiri. So, kalau kita ada chow, fork chow, maknanya dia ada sub-process. So, dia akan create another sub-process of ID. Sub-process ID yang sama. Tapi, dia akan tahu this is belong to the fork chow. Chow dia nombor 2, 6, 1, 5. Okay, so P1 dia ada dia punya ni. Okay, ataupun dia are sharing the same fork chart. So, I'm, apa yang berlaku ialah apabila dia P0 dan P1 dia, dia running secara concurrently dan dia akan mengakses benda yang sama, maka dia akan berlaku we call as a race condition. Okay. Alright, so in the race conditions, okay. Okay, the risk condition is happens where the situation where the server process access and manipulate the same data concurrently and the outcome of the executions depends on the particular order in which the access takes place. So, dia, ambil mas dia akan ada berlaku risk conditions. Okay, berlaku perebutan. Okay, berlumba-lumba. Dia nakkan uh, accessing the data ataupun the resources. Contohnya, dia nakkan input device ataupun dia nak output device. Okay, the same box create function yang tadi tu dia perlukan um, dia perlukan akses pada proses uh, pada certain-certain data. Apabila bila uh, berlaku perebutan di sini, dia akan mendapat dia akan dapati data yang dia yang diterima oleh kedua-dua tu adalah data yang inconsistent. Data yang tidak boleh dipakailah kalau kita dalam technical dia panggil sebagai garbage data. Uh, so, dia kata as a garbage data lah. Okay. So, to get against the risk condition, kita kena ensure that only one process at a time can be manipulating the variables. Okay. Uh, kita kena pastikan eh, dalam operating system, operating system kena pastikan benda ni. Apabila uh, berlaku risk condition, kita make sure that only process dalam satu masa yang akan do some manipulations, okay, can access the data and then to make sure the guarantee, the process must be synchronized in the some way. Okay, alright. So, therefore, uh, uh, the situation such as the just as described tadi akan frequently operate as a different parts of the system manipulating, manipulate resources. Ini sel selalu berkongsi, bukan sahaja data, eh. dia akan berlaku risk condition dari segi resources. Okay, contohnya uh, dua sistem nak access dua proses tu nak access uh, memory pada masa yang sama. So, macam mana operating system ni decide which process need to be accessed that particular memory dalam masa yang pada masa tersebut. Uh, so, ini akan berlaku apabila dia berlaku cooperating ataupun berlaku dalam concurrently ataupun parallel. Kalau dia berlaku in the sequence, dia tak akan berlaku lah. Dia tak akan berlaku risk condition. Ok. So Ok. So furthermore, dalam chapter ni kita akan tengok the growing the importance of multi-core system has brought an increase emphasis on developing multi-threaded application. So dalam ni kita akan tengok bukan sahaja single processor, kita akan tengok juga di dalam 
uh, a multi-core. Multi-core maknanya you have more than one processes. Okay, that run it. Dan macam mana dia akan create. Okay, macam mana dia boleh develop atau create the multi-threaded application. In such application, several threads which is are quite possibly, possibly sharing data can be running in parallel on the different processing core. Okay. It's been clearly that we want to change the result from the such activity not to interfere to interfere with another process. Okay, kalau kita buat proses, kalau buat changes, the result tu, kita nak pastikan, uh, kita nak kena pastikan activity tu tak ada mengganggu atau mengganggu gugat proses yang lain. So, the that's why, uh, because the when because of this important of this issue we devote to have a major portions to have a chapter on the process synchronization and coordination coordination among cooperating process that's why topic ni antara topik penting eh dalam uh, principle of operating system di mana how you con how your process can be synchronized okay how your process can be synchronized okay uh, when you have a multiple process running in a multi-processor. Alright. So, the each process. Okay. So, we have a call. Dalam ni. Okay. Kita akan tengok issue dulu. And how we solve it. Okay. So, the first thing. We begin the consideration of process generation. By discussing. The, uh, discussing the so-called critical section problems. Okay. Dalam critical section problems ni. Okay. We consider a system consisting of n process. Okay, kita assume saja okay, dalam satu operating system kita ada n process. Kita tak tahu berapa banyak. Okey, dia bergantung kepada a uh, user. Okey, how many process? How many bergantung pada komputer dan juga dia bergantung kepada a uh, user itu sendiri. Berapa banyak program dia buka dalam masa tertentu masa yang sama. Then each process has a segment code or we call as a critical section. Setiap proses ni, okay, kita consider dia ada ada end process. So, setiap proses dia ada critical section dia. Okay, critical section ni macam the segment of code lah. Okay, so in which process ni maybe changing. Uh, okay, bila dia ada segment of code ni, dia akan menyebabkan ada perubahan pada variable dia. Kita update the table, writing the file and so on. Banyak. Setiap section, critical section ni dia ada activity dia. Okay, antaranya ialah dia bunyi, aktiviti dia ialah you changes dia punya variable, <coughs> you update dia punya table, okay, you writing the file and but then banyak lagi. Okay, kalau macam you access your system tu dengan database, uh, so you akan write the file tu, masuk, you akan write into database, save dalam database, lepas tu ataupun you nak buka file daripada database. Okay, so the, the important features of the system is that when the one process is executing in the critical sections, there's no other process is allowed to execute in the its critical section. So, dalam kes ini, apa yang kita buat ialah kita kena pastikan okay, mana-mana proses yang run tengah run dia punya critical section so proses lain tidak dibenarkan okey tak benar dia tak benarkan execute dia punya critical section okey there is no two processes okey are executing in their protocol that the processes can use to cooperate so each process must request permission to enter its critical section so untuk menyelakkan ini apa kita buat Setiap proses yang nak kan buat critical section, dia kena minta permission. Okay, the permission in order to enter, masuk ke dalam entry critical section tadi. Okay, so bila dia minta critical section, so how kita, uh, kita how kita implement dia, kita akan letak satu section of code, implement this by request the entry section, macam function lah, kita letak satu entry function, lepas tu followed by, critical section uh, with the exit section and the also the remainder section. So, dia ada tiga benda. So, dalam ketika setiap proses yang masuk critical section tu ok, dia ada tiga benda. So, dia kena ada entry section, ok, lepas tu dia ada uh, exit section ok, and then dia ada remainder section. So, critical section problem ni, di, kita dah kita dah uh, dah didesainkan as a protocol eh, 
protocol rules okay di mana processes yang corporate processes okay must follow this critical section problem okay dia akan mesti maknanya kalau setiap proses satu proses dah masuk critical section another process tak boleh run or execute dia punya critical section so be setiap proses nak buat critical section kena ada permission Okay, so bila dia ada permission, dia kena ada entry section, kena ada exit section and also dia kena ada reminder section. So, the general structure of the typical process, okay, dia akan tunjuk lah. Okay, you boleh tengok dalam buku. Okay, so the entry section and the exit section are enclosed in the boxes to highlight the, the importance of the segment. Ah, so, that's me. So, this is general structure of the process. So, they must do... So, this is entry section, okay, and you have a critical section, and then you have exit section, and the reminder section. Scanning so, this, to punya algorithm lah. Okay. Right, so, apa yang, okay, so, apa yang kita boleh, apa yang diperlukan for solution to critical section problem ni, ada tiga benda. Okay, pertama adalah dari segi mutual exclusion. Okay, mutual exclusion adalah di mana, If process is executing, any process is executing in its critical section, there's no other process can be executing in their critical section. Kalau dia, uh, be, dia tengok ada proses yang tengah run dia punya critical section, so proses lain yang nak, kan, nak run juga critical section, kena tunggu. Okay? Alright. So, the progress. Okay. If no process is executing in its critical section, And there exit some processes that wish to enter the critical section. Then the selection of the process that will enter the critical section next cannot be postponed indefinitely. So, dalam syarat yang kedua dalam critical section problem, we have a progress. So, progress ni, dia punya syarat dia ialah, kalau tak ada proses yang execute the critical section, dan some process, dia dah request. Okay, dia nak request to enter dia punya critical section only those process that not executed in, in the reminder section can participate and decide which uh, which process will enter its critical section next and this section this selection cannot be postponed indefinitely dah tak boleh postpone dah so progress okay so bila tak ada process yang executed critical section okay and ada some process process yang sedang yang nak kan masuk ke kita section ni ok so se uh, so apa yang OS akan buat selection ialah proses mana yang akan dia akan membuat uh, pemilihan proses mana yang akan masuk ke dalam kita section ada dah tak boleh postpone dah so dia tak ada postpone dah uh, dia tak ada postpone postpone dah dia terus progress masuk eh ok dan yang ketiga ialah bounded waiting. So, bounded waiting is the bound, okay, that must exist on the number of times that the other process, okay, bounded waiting, that, that is an exist a bound or limit, okay, or on the number of items that process are allowed to enter their critical section after a process has made a request to enter its critical section and before that request is made, contact. So, the bound of waiting ni must be exist, eh. Bound ataupun limit. The bound tu macam limit lah. Kita akan limit berapa banyak number of items. Ah, uh, Number of times of the process can be allowed to enter the premier to the section. After a process has, so, dia akan kira selepas process tu dah request. For the critical, dia dah masuk ke dalam request for en to enter the critical section. Dan before the process can be granted the punya requests. Okay, kita assume each process ni they execute non-zero speed. However, we can we can make no assumption concerning okay the relative speed of the end processes. Okay, any at a given point in time, the many kernel mode process may be active in the operating system. So, as a result, the code implementing an operating systems, an operating system kernel is subject to several possible race conditions. So, akan berlaku. Uh, okay, so, 
kita continue uh, during this lecture okay with the interrupt phase solutions okay so previously kita tahu interrupt memang dah ada dalam operating system and operating system is a part of interrupt driver so apa yang dah berlaku dalam interrupt phase solution ni ialah mesti yang proses tadi ialah bila proses masuk the critical uh, entry sessions okay kita dah tahu dia gunakan mutual exclusion punya syarat kan Uh, so, dia bila dia boleh menggunakan mutual exclusion, bila proses dah masuk ke uh, critical section, dah entry kan, dah masuk entry section, dia punya interrupt will be disabled. Sebab, only one process can execute or uh, can execute dia punya critical section. So, proses lagi tak boleh masuk, tak boleh enter the critical section. So, uh, bila dah dia exit, Proses tu dah buat di ketika section semua. Bila dah dia dah masuk sampai exit and section, baru interrupts will be enabled. So, adakah itu akan solve the problem? Uh, okay. Actually, no. Because, apa yang berlaku ialah, uh, ia akan berlaku, apa yang berlaku ialah, dia punya ketika section tu, kod tu, run for an hours. More than one hours. Okay, ni biasanya ia berlaku apabila you have a poor designs of your punya coding lah. Okay, so if the critical section, okay, code ni run for more than one hours. Okay, ni proses lain tengah queue ni. Nak proses lain pun nak run di critical section problem. So, critical section. So, apa yang berlaku ialah bila certain proses tu, kita pakai interrupt base ni. Bila critical section proses tu dah enter the critical sections, interrupt automatic disable. Hanya dia akan enable balik bila proses tu dah dah habis. Okay, the critical section dah, dah masuk exit section, baru interrupts. Okay, proses lain boleh interrupt dan boleh ni. Tapi, kita bayangkan satu proses tu, kalau dia punya critical section tu run more than hours. More than one hours. Mereka hours lah, beberapa, several hours. So, apa yang berlaku ialah, it's not solve the problems. Okay? Dia akan menyebabkan berlaku proses starve vision. Okay? Ataupun we call it proses starve. Starve. Okay, ke kelaparan. Okay? So, because dia tak boleh enter dia punya critical, tak boleh enter dia punya, tak boleh execute dia punya critical sections. Dan, apa yang juga yang berlaku, sebabkan ni, Uh, currently, kita punya teknologi CPU, walaupun dia single processor, tapi dia boleh have illogically, okay, physically, one processor. Tapi, logically, kadang-kadang, dia have two more of CPUs. So, what happens? So, you have not fully utilized your punya CPU. That's a problem. Okay? Some process is starving. Stuff, okay? To enter the critical section, tapi dia tak boleh masuk. Sebab syarat, kita ikut syarat yang Pertama tadi adalah menggunakan critical section yang mana kalau dah berlaku critical section, proses lain tak boleh execute dia punya critical section. Tapi untuk one particular processor, how about we have more than two processors? Okay, we have a two CPUs running. We have two CPUs. Ha. So, that the issue are coming in lah. Ha. Okay, so low CPU to run. Okay, you tak low CPU utilization banyak bila buatkan proses starve ok, proses starving ok, bila you pakai interrupt based solution ok, bukan kata interrupt ni tak boleh pakai, boleh ok, cumanya dia akan create beberapa isu lah antaranya uh, isu sebab uh, setiap proses bila masuk entry section disable dia akan interrupt Uh, dan hanya boleh dia interrupt, proses lain boleh interrupt hanya bila proses tu dah left the critical section tadi. Uh, so, nak kena tunggulah. So, berapa lama nak tunggu tu? Uh, then, itu satu isu dia yang kena solve. Okay? Alright. So, how we do a solution? So, solution pertama ialah menggunakan software solution. Okay? Alright. So, tu software solution. Ialah dia menggunakan solution pertama adalah dia guna proses solution iaitu assume we have a load and store machine language instruction which is automate. 
atomic tu one satu dia okay, and cannot be interrupted so the two process share one a variable okay contohnya i and t g turn to so the variable turn will indicate whose turn it to enter the critical section so solution pertama dia ialah dia solve dengan menggunakan solve solution iaitu gunakan load and stop load and stop ni kita dah belajar uh, you dah belajar masa uh, you dah belajar load and stop ni dalam machine language dalam machine language kita ada satu function which is load and stop which is specific instructions okay that cannot be interrupt so kalau ada load and stop ni so processing dah tahu dah okay, kita tak boleh interrupt okay so and these two machine function ni kita akan share gunakan satu variable dipanggil turn turn ni akan memberitahu or indicate kita siapa the next process yang akan take or enter to the critical session ok so this is the punya algorithm lah ok ha. right ok so Okay, so kita kena correctness of the software solution, the mutual, okay, exclusion is preserved. Okay, so maknanya syarat yang pertama tadi, mutual exclusion, there's no process, for, uh, only one, uh, kalau ada satu, ada process yang enter for critical section, process ni tak boleh, uh, tak boleh execute, dia punya critical section. Okay, so kita dah preserve that exclusion, mutual exclusion yang pertama. Di mana kita kita pastikan bila mana pre process yang enter critical section dia akan turn. Okay. The next process. Okay. So macam mana buat the progress requirement? Ah Progress requirement tadi kalau tak ada process yang exist dekat dalam critical section so dia boleh masuk kan? Ha, dan macam mana pula dengan bounded waiting requirement tadi? Ha, dia tak solve lagi. So maknanya interrupt based solution yang kita bagi tadi dia hanya boleh solve the mutual exclusion saja, Tapi dia tak solve the progress requirement dan juga bounded waiting punya syarat. Okay. So that's why we come up with the one solution. Okay. Which is the Peterson. Okay. Peterson's uh, solution. So Peterson solution ni, they use two process solution. This is a soft, classic software based solution to the critical section that we panggil sebagai Peterson solution. Okay, so because of the way of the modern computer architecture perform the basic machine language such as load and stop, then there's no guarantee that Peterson solution ni will work correctly on the modern punya computer architecture. Okay, macam modern computer architecture contohnya pakai object oriented, okay, multi-trading, so it's not guarantee. So, however, we present the solution because they provide a good algorithm, algorithmatic descriptions of how to solve the critical section problem and illustrate some of the complexity involved in designing software that address the requirement of mutual exclusion, progress and the bounded routine. Uh, so, so, walaupun feature solutions ni is a classic software solution, okay, tapi tak menjamin ianya boleh digunakan dalam modern computer architecture. Tapi, oleh kerana kita kenapa kita discuss juga this kind of solutions kerana dia provide a good uh, a good description dari segi algorithm dia dalam nak solve critical section problem lah ok di mana dia boleh address uh, the, bila kita dia design the software Peterson solution ni dia boleh address requirement untuk mutual exclusion, the progress dan juga the bounded rating ok So, dalam Peterson solution ni, they have suggest two process solution. And then, we have a load and store machine language, which is, will be uh, instruction that will be atomic and will, that cannot be interrupted. So, the two process share the two variables, okay? The, which is uh, int turn dan juga boolean flag. So, variable turn ni uh, akan indicate proses yang mana yang akan the next proses yang akan enter the critical section and the flag array ni akan indicate which process is ready to enter the critical section so they apply lah okay uh, so apply the mutual exclusion so 
Uh, dia take turn okay, untuk proses ni next proses yang uh, akan enter di kucing section dan dia akan bagi tahu array indicate proses mana yang akan ready untuk enter di kucing section so this is the okay okay so Peterson uh, decided to process the alternate execution between the critical section and the remainder section so the process are numbered Okay, so for example, P0 and P1. Okay, so for convenience, we're representing P, uh, we use a PJ to denote that another process that use J equals to 1 minus I. So, Peter's solutions provide two process that to share data item iaitu entity uh, uh, and dan juga boolean flag. So, dalam double button ni, macam kita cakap tadi, indicate whose turn to be entered the critical section. Okay, then the process, okay, if the turn equals to I, then the process akan allow to execute the critical section. So, the flag array tadi akan use to indicate the process that it should be ready to enter its critical section. So, kalau the flag to true, so this value will indicate the PI is ready to enter the critical section, okay. Okay, so enter the critical section, process ni akan set as a flag I to be true and then set turn to be value J. So, kita nak bezakan eh. Uh, so, they why they assert the if the other process wish to enter the critical section, it can do so. If both process try to enter at the same time, the turn will be set to both I and J roughly at the same time. Okay, they're going to end eh. Uh, so, so, only one of these assignment will last, okay, and the order will be occur but will be overwritten immediately. So, the eventual value of turn determines which of the two process is allowed to enter its critical section first. So, now kita boleh buktikan. Okay, we can prove that this solution is correct. Okay, di mana is for this. So, criticism solutions ni provide the three requirement. Okay, critical section requirement. Met the critical, uh, critical section uh, premium requirement lah. First, the mutual exclusion is preserved. Okay, di mana the process enter CS only if they false or turn into I. Okay, and the progress requirement is well is satisfied, and the bounded waiting requirement also is met. Okay. Okay. So, although useful, okay, walaupun Peterson Solutions ni, okay, can demonstrate, okay, a good, uh, good algorithms, okay, but it cannot guarantee to work in the modern architecture, in the current architecture, because they have to improve the performance, the processes, or the compiler may be reorder operations that have no dependency. So, understanding why it works not, Okay, understanding why it works, not work is useful for better understanding the race conditions. Okay, for single threaded, this is okay. As a result, will always be the same. So, dalam picture solutions ni, yeah, okay, untuk uh, classic punya boleh. Okay, classic, okay, uh, classic punya architecture boleh. Okay, for single threads, it can be happens. Okay, it's okay. For, alright, we have good result, but with the current okay modern architecture such as a multi threading means okay we have a multi processing symmetric multi processing pastu kita ada asymmetric multi processing means okay so it not produce inconsistency or unexpected results okay so that's why the Peterson solutions ni only can classify as a classic software solutions
okay so we continue our videos okay so uh, previously we discussed about the software based solutions to the critical selection problem however we mentioned that software based solution such as like Peterson's okay solutions is not guaranteed to work on the modern architecture so in this topic in this uh, in these slides okay we will discuss about how we explore several more solutions to the critical selection problem using the technique ranging from the hardware to software based api which is available to both kernel developers and also application programmers so all these solutions are based on the premise of locking okay which is means that they protect the critical regions through the use of lock uh, so uh, as we shall see, the designs of such lock can be quite sophisticated. Lah. Okay, so um, as we know, okay, critical section problem can be could be solved in the simple single processor environment. Uh, okay, so. It can be solved only in the single process environment, which is can prevent interrupts from uh, occurring while a shared variables was being modified. Okay, so kita tak ada, tak ada issue. Kalau kita run critical section, critical section problem, takkan ada uh, can be solved apabila we have a single processor or unit processor. Because kita boleh disable the interrupts, okay. Untuk uh, disable the right or prevent the interrupts from occurring while you when uh, sub process ataupun the sub process to share the variables or ataupun variable to sedang di modified in this way we could be you sure that the current sequence of the instruction will be allowed to execute in order in order without preemption okay so kalau lu kod tak ada tak ada issue lah so run code yang running tak perlu ada berlaku force okay untuk si for CPU untuk force untuk uh, untuk force untuk paksa lepaskan processor okey kena tak perlu ada without preemption lah okey um okey without any preemptions there's no other instruction that akan run so no unexpected modification could be made to shared variables so this is the open approach taken by the non preemptive kernel Unfortunately, uh, this solution is not feasible in a multiprocessor environment. Okay, so untuk um, kita susun solution sesuai untuk uh, single processor. Okay, tapi kalau untuk um, uh, multiprocessor environment, okay, is not being feasible. Okay, when you dis uh, disable interrupt on a multiprocessor, it can be time consuming. Okay, because when you since the, we pass the message to all the processors, this message passing will be delayed entry into its critical section and the system will be efficiency decrease. Dia akan menyebabkan uh, your PC system akan too inefficient okay, on the multi-processor system. Okay. So, and then, it menyebabkan you punya operating system tak boleh broadly scalable. Kamu tak boleh expand awak punya enhance awak punya operating system okay, uh, secara scalable. Okay. Okay. Also consider the effect of the system clock if the clock is kept updated by the interrupt. Okay. So in the many modern computer system, therefore they provide a special hardware. Alright. So that's why they have a special hardware support. Okay. Uh, which in uh, hardware that will allow the user to test and modify the content of the words or to swap the contents of the two words secara atomic atomic atomically i say secara atomically di mana only one interruptible unit okay so we can use this special instruction to solve the critical section problem in the relatively simple, simple manner daripada kita discuss specific instruction for one specific machine Kita akan abstract the main concept behind the types of instruction by describing test and set. Okay, dia ada dalam synchronization hardware ni, dia akan introduce dua benda. Satu ialah uh, hardware instructions. Okay, support dengan hardware instruction. And uh, then dia akan buat uh, two functions. Okay, 
secara atomically ok iaitu test and set and compare and the sort instruction ok ok so dalam hardware instructions ni we use a special hardware instruction yang saya cakap tadi lah uh, either guna test and modify the content of words or to swap the contents of two words secara atomically or interrupted way. So, dia ada dua instruction. Satu test and set instruction. Satu compare and swap instruction. So, test and set instruction ni okay, uh, normally dia akan execute secara automatically okay, and then dia akan execute simultaneously. Okay. Uh, kalau dia mati processor, dia boleh run secara each in the in the, each in different CPU lah. Okay, then will be executed sequentially in the sum arbitrary order. So, dia boleh secara sequence, sequence sequentially ataupun dia boleh run in a different CPU. If the machine support the test and set instruction, then we can implement the mature expression by declaring the boolean variable log and initialize to in as a false. Okay, so that is test and set instruction. Okay. Untuk compare and swap instruction, okay, dia kontra dengan test and set tadi. Di mana dia operate on three operands. Okay. Di mana the operand value is a set to new value only if the... Okay. So, this is the test set instructions. Okay. Yang saya terangkan tadi. So, the boolean test instruction dia ada boolean and also the target. And normally, this test set instruction execute secara automatically. And they return the original value of the first parameter. Okay, set the value parameter to the true. Okay. This is the solution for test and set. Okay, so this is a compare and swap. Ini saya cakap tadi. Di mana di dalam compare ini, ini dia ada three operands. Okay, di mana the operand is a set to the new values. Okay, kita akan set dia as a new values. Only if the expression the value equals to expected. Bila uh, value and expected ni, expected ni betul, true, baru dia akan set the new value. Then the regardless, the compare the swap uh, function always return the original value. Dia akan return balik the original value of the variable value. Okay, uh, the, like the test and session, they compare and swap. Right, so yang ni pun dia run secara automatically Dia return the original values And dia akan set the values Okay, dia set the new values Bila value tu sama dengan expected lah ha. Okay Alright, so, bila dia dua function ni berat secara automatically, the mature equation can be provided as a follows. They have a variable log. Hmm, ni so, okay, dia ada variable log. Okay, so dia ada variable log. And then, the, dia akan log benda tu. Okay. So, variable log. So, dalam variable log, which you can provide as global variable log is declared and initial to zero. So, the first process invoke the compare and swap will set log to one and it will then enter a critical section because the original value of log was equal to the expected value of zero. So, subsequent call to compare and swap function will not succeed because the log now not is not equal to the expected value of zero. So when process exit the critical section, then the set log back will be to zero balik. So which allow another process to enter its critical section. So macam yang process tadi dah, there has a mutual execution uh, dengan compare.
Okay, walaupun hmm, solution ni, okay, they satisfy the mutual exclusion requirement, but they do not satisfy the bonded waiting requirement. Di mana dia akan present, uh, di mana? Okay, so we can see that dalam ni, okay, data structure ni, okay, we do not another algorithm with the set instruction that satisfy, okay, instruction uh, to the power. Okay, the power. Okay, so apa yang berlaku ialah the mutual exclusion is met, okay, and then, tapi, alright, to prove the progress is met, kita nampak argument presented in the mutual exclusion also apply, okay, di mana dia akan to prove the bonded waiting, you know that when the process leave the critical section, then dia akan scan the array waiting in the cyclic ordering, so it design the first process in this ordering that is entry section, which is next one to the, enter the critical section. So, any process waiting to enter is critical section will do so that with the n minus 1 will be done. So, okay, uh, kita akan nampak implementation atomic test set ni dengan and the compass what ni in session dalam dalam implementation nanti. Okay. Alright, so dalam uh, dalam locking ni, so dia hanya uh, bila dia enter ketika sessions, okay, dia akan equals to set so one. Tapi kalau the left, okay, maknanya dia akan slow set back into a zero lah. So, typically instructions such as compare, swap are used as a building block for other synchronization tool. So, another tool is we call atomic variable, di mana this what provide the atomic uninterrupted updates on the basic data set. Okay, such as, um, ni ni lah eh. Okay, so atomic variable, kita ada uh, variables kat sini. Okay, yang dia akan compare and swap. And then, tapi ni dia akan return balik lah. Okay, the variables. Okay. Alright, so yang ti tadi dia bagian log. So, in the how we solution to the cases problem, kita um, nampak macam complicated. Okay, inaccessible to application programmers. Okay, instead of operating system designers build software tools to solve the critical section problems, the simplest of these two is the new text logs. Okay, kita tambah uh, macam log tu nampak complicated kan? Kita ada test set, compare, lepas tu ada compare and swap instruction pula. So, kita uh, instead kita biar operating system designer yang fikir software tools untuk solve critical solution problem kita bagi make a simple one uh, tools yang kita panggil sebagai the mutex lock. Okay, mutex in fact the terms of mutex in the short of for the mutual exclusion. Okay, mutex tu maksudnya mutual is a short form for mu for the mutual exclusions. Okay, Okay, then dia tambah dengan log. So, the, we use the mutex logs, okay, to protect the critical region and this to prevent the risk conditions. Uh, okay, so kita pakai the mutex logs, okay. So, dalam mutex log ni, okay, dia ada boolean variables, okay, that indicate if the log is, is available or not. So, the mutex tu ni akan indicate sama ada the log tu is available ataupun tidak. Kalau log tu available, okay, if the is uh, the log is available, then they have an acquire a function, ada acquire function eh, ada acquire function uh, of logs, okay, and then they release the log function, log function and release functions ok, untuk release the log ok, release function ni untuk release the log acquire ialah untuk request a log and then acquire uh, the the acquire and the release function ni dia akan call 
Okay, in atomic atomic rate. Okay, dalam electro system kau lah. Okay, normally dia akan implement dalam bentuk Hawaii atomic instructions such as a compare and swap tadi lah. Okay. Okay. So, tapi ni uh, text log ni uh, disadvantage dia ialah uh, dia require of busy waiting di mana while process is in critical section, any other process that try to enter its critical section must loop continuously in a call to acquire function. Uh, so, satu masalah dia ni text log ni nampak macam simple ok, tetapi apa, apa isu dia ialah dia akan menyebabkan Proses akan keep busy waiting. Okay, dia akan menyebabkan satu continual looping. Okay. Uh, okay, continual looping. Uh, uh, it can create a continual looping di mana dia akan keep acquire for the log. Okay. Alright. So, therefore, this uh, mutex logs, this type of mutex log, kita dia panggil sebagai uh, spin log kerana the process will spin while waiting for the log to become available. Spin log. Kenapa dia panggil spin log instead of mutex logs? Because uh, uh, the another process uh, I keep spinning, uh, busy waiting, uh, okay, call for acquire, acquire functions in order to request for the log lah in sebaliknya dia boleh masuk critical section ok to make sure there will be ever work so spin log ni have an advantages ok however there is no contact switch ok it's required when the process must quit on a log and contact switch may take considerable time thus when log are expected to be held for a short time spin log are useful They are often employed on, on normally uh, method slot ni banyak digunakan dalam multi processor system where killer one thread to spin uh, on one processor another thread can perform a critical session in another processor uh, so itu keboleh ke, kebanyakan dalam multi processing ataupun uh, um, LLC metric multi processing punya architecture dia akan menggunakan mutex lux punya konsep lah uh, basic concept tapi dia ada tambah lain baik lagi lah ok ok this is uh, how the the problems ok using the mutex log yang tadi lah so the acquire log functions ok before they can enter the critical section so bila dia dah siap dia punya critical section dia akan do some release the log functions uh, so apa yang berlaku ialah yang mana busy waiting ni dia akan keep acquire the log uh, busy waiting tu yang dia Continual loops tadi Ok Dia akan Continual loops Ok uh, Untuk Let's go call a spin lock tadi Alright Ok now we go to the Summer false Ok summer false ni tak, uh, Hampir sama dengan New tech locks We use a method New tech locks punya concept Ok And uh, Ok Tapi uh, Kita tambah baik lagi Dengan More robust Ok di mana dia akan menggunakan uh, robust tool that can be have can behave similarly to method logs and can provide more sophisticated way for the process to synchronize dia punya activity ok, uh, ni banyaknya banyak berlaku di dalam multi processing lah ok, so dalam synchronization tool that provide more sophisticated way, semaphore ni ok, enhancement daripada method logs ok, tapi dia provide lebih kepada sophisticated way not like a simple such as like a new text log for the, the process to synchronize dia punya activity so dalam semaphore ni apa yang dia buat dalam semaphore dia akan introduce a semaphore as a s as an integer variable which is apart from the initialization and is accessed only through two standard atomic operation which is weight and the signal so dia ada dua two indivisible operations weighting function and also signal function ok so dalam waiting operation ok the, the was originally term ok di mana 
okay untuk test okay and signal was originally called v from vogens okay to increments so waiting dia ada dia punya operation dia sendiri and okay so busy okay so all the modification dalam to the integer value of the semaphore ni dalam weight ni and the signal operation must be executed indivisibly okay so maknanya boleh dibagi secara sama rata that is when the one process modify the semaphore value kalau ada one process modify the semaphore value the another process can simultaneously modify the same semaphore value so that's why the s in semaphore values ni sangat important dalam semaphore dia akan create the some integer variable ni di mana proses lain boleh guna balik that kind of semaphore ok uh, then boleh execute secara concurrent ni so uh, ok alright so in addition in if the case of weight of s ok the testing of the integer value s ok which is s so equals or uh, less or equals than 0 as well as is possible modification of s minus and minus must be executed without interaction so they will keep continuing doing lah ok tanpa uh, keep tanpa berlaku interruption ok so we can see that this operation can be implemented lah ok dalam macam mana software for is being used ok so operating system oftenly distinguish okay boleh beza antara counting by counting and the binary semaphore lah macam mana boleh operating system boleh bezakan yang mana counting and binary semaphore okay the value of the counting semaphore can range over unrestricted domain unrestricted domain they can be any numbers tak ada restricted lah tak ada restrict uh, apa ni dia ada restrict tapi Untuk value uh, of the binary semaphore, dia ada range dia antara kosong dan satu sahaja. Okay. So, binary semaphore behaves similar to mutant slots. Okay. So, mutants. So, binary semaphore ni akan sama works at, on the mutant locks function. In fact, the system do not provide mutant locks. Okay. The binary semaphore can be used instead of providing the mutual exclusion so in the counting semaphore can be used to control to ex to control access to a given resource consisting of an infinite for the finite number of, of instances so the semaphore is initialized to the number of resources available so that process which to use a resource perform a weight operation so minor process process okay yang terang the critical section and weight and, and require for resources okay uh, we can have to go to the weight operation on the semaphore and when the perform when the process release the processes then it can be a perform a signal operation okay or incremental account so when the count the semaphore goes to zero all the resources are being used so process which is use the processes which to use the resource will block until the count becomes greater than zero Okay, so we can use the semaphore to solve the various simulation problems. For example, when we have two concurrent running process. Okay, alright, we have a two concurrent process running, which is a P1, okay, with the statement S1, and P2 with the statement of S2. Okay, suppose we require S2 to be executed only after S1 okay has completed so we can implement this scheme readily by let the p1 and the p2 share the common semaphore sync with the initialized to zero so in the process p1 we insert the statement lah yes that's why kita insert the statement signal sync lah with the variable signal sync and then in the p2 kita ada wait sync so Apa yang perubahan pada signal sync ni akan diterima dekat waiting state. Ha. Okay. 
Okay. So, semaphore, okay. Okay, must guarantee that the snow filter process can execute to wait the signal on the same semaphore at the same time. Those the implementation become the critical section problem where the weight and signal code are placed in the critical section. So, they could not have a busy waiting. So, they tak ada problem dah. Ya, macam new tech sort, they are busy waiting kan. So, they akan berlaku loop spin lock. Tapi, yang ini, dia tak akan have busy waiting in. Hanya berlaku busy waiting di dalam critical section during the implementations of the code. Dan, but implementation dia code mesti very short. Okay, dia tak boleh terlalu panjang dan dia mesti very short uh, and because they not less the competition time. So, they, they have make sure that the little busy meeting if you just really occupied. Okay, so the key, this is a critical uh, in the single function way we can solve the simply inhibiting interrupt during the time and the weight and the signal operation executing. This can work in a single process environment because once interrupt are inhibited, instruction from the different process cannot be interleaved. Okay, only the current running process execute until interrupts are re-enabled and the scheduler can regain the control. So, this is the issue lah kalau in the single. Dalam multi-processor environment, interrupt must be disabled on every processor. So, otherwise, interrupt Otherwise, okay, instruction from different process, running a different processor may be interleaved in some arbitrary way. So, bila dalam single processor environment, kita tak ada isu dalam semaphore ni sebab they can solve inhibiting the interrupts, okay, during the time wait and signal operations lah. Okay, tapi dalam multiprocessor, interrupt will be dis disabled on every processor. So, otherwise, instruction from different process that running on the different process may interleave in some arbitrary way. So, therefore, SMP must system must provide the alternative locking techniques, okay, such as a complex swap or spring lock to ensure that the weight and the signal are performed secara automatically. So, it is important to admit that we have not completely eliminated busy waiting with this definition weight and signal operation. Rather, we have moved busy waiting from the entry section to the critical section of the application program. Furthermore, we have a limited busy waiting to the critical section of the wait and the signal operation and these sections are short. Okay, thus the critical section is almost never be occupied and busy waiting occurs rarely. Then, for only a short time. Okay, akan ada berapa tapi in very short time. So, an entirely the different situation exists with the application program whose critical session may be long. Okay, dia akan dia akan berlaku in the situation apabila application tu it takes too long. Okay, it takes a minutes or even hours okay, to be occupied or to be execution. Okay, so nanti kalau, tapi kalau bila kalau ia bergantung juga kepada program. Okay, kalau program tu terlalu panjang ataupun it takes so long to be executed then busy waiting akan extremely inefficient lah uh, so each of the social media queue so to operation the block is where the place the process involved the operation on the operate waiting queue and wake up and the remove one of the process in the waiting queue and place in the ready queue okay this is how the implement again no busy waiting okay so problems with the same force okay all right do we continue with the next video